Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan, and today I'm going to be talking about Love, Simon. I am sorry that this video is going up a day late, I apologize for that, but this week has been extremely busy, more so than I thought it would, so... It's just been a little bit overwhelming, but I will have the video up today and another video up tomorrow. Okay, so I saw Love, Simon two days ago for the first time. I know I'm really late to it, but I was really excited to see it. I went with a bunch of friends. It was a blast, and I really loved the movie. I, to be fair, am the exact target audience because I love high school coming of age stories especially if they're done well and it definitely reminded me of John Hughes films in some senses and I'm a huge John Hughes fan so I feel like I was like the perfect audience for it so bear that in mind with my review because obviously I'm gonna have a little bit of bias since coming of age movies are pretty much my favorite movies out of anything ever so you know, there's that. But I am going to talk about what I liked and what I didn't like. I will say that in most of my positive reviews I still have quite a few negatives that I want to touch on, but in this one honestly it's going to be pretty much all positive and I'm really going to talk about what I think it did so right. It's also worth noting that I have not read Simon and the Homo Sapien Agenda, so I'm not doing this as a comparison of the book to movie or an adaptation. Uh, I'm just reviewing the movie itself. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's just dive right into the video. I'm going to start with a non-spoiler section and then go into a spoilery discussion at the end. So Love, Simon follows Simon, who is a gay student at a high school. He is not out, he is closeted, and basically it's about his struggles as a gay teenager and him trying to find his place within the school, within his friend group, within his family, and it's really about him figuring out who he's going to be. On top of that, there's another student who identifies as Blue, who has written an anonymous letter basically on like a website that all the students go on, and he's basically come out as gay without actually coming out. He's still anonymous. So Simon reaches out and says that he too is a closeted gay student at that high school. They start corresponding and Simon's trying to figure out kind of who Blue is while at the same time trying to navigate his life as a closeted gay person. So I think that there are a lot of aspects to the story and I think that while there are a lot of aspects, it really takes its time to explore them, which is what I really love. I really appreciate stories, especially like this, where the drama is really internal, that take their time and really establish the relationships, because I think that that's such a key thing. I think that Love, Simon does this particularly well. For the first 20 minutes, maybe even half an hour of the movie, it's all about establishing Simon, who he is, who his friends are, who his parents are, and really establishing that he is just a normal guy, but a gay guy. It also does a really great job of establishing as kind of this endearing, awkward character, which I find extremely relatable. And I think that really furthers the whole, he's gay, but he's just a normal guy. And I think that's kind of the message of the story overall, and it does a really great job of trying to reiterate that as much as possible, that even though he is gay, he has the same experiences as everyone else, which is why I think that this story is such an important one. I love his relationships with his friends, as well as with his family. I think that it's really amazing to see especially in a coming-of-age movie, a positive relationship between him and his family. I made a video a while back and I got some heat for it because I don't think I explained myself very well in it, but in the video I basically said that in YA we don't see a lot of positive examples of family dynamics. In YA it's generally a broken family or a uh, absent parent or dead parents, an orphan. Basically it's just really dysfunctional or broken families, which is completely fine. I completely understand that there are plenty of people that have that experience and it's really positive to see that and see representations of their life and family in 
story and media, which is why me, as someone who has a really supportive family and as someone who really gets along with all of their siblings and parents and all of that, I love to see positive examples of families in young adult fiction, which I, again, just feel like you don't see a lot of. So that's kind of what I was trying to say in that video, is that I just love to see a little bit more diversity of what we portray families as. It can be great to show examples of negative kind of relationships in families, but I think it's also great to show positive examples of what families can be like. So that's kind of what I was getting at in that video, and I think that Love, Simon does a great job of showing this family who, you know, they love each other, they really are supportive of each other, but there is also elements of, you know, it's they're not gonna get along all the time. It just, to me, the family felt very real and I understood them, and I think some of the most emotional parts of the movie were parts that had the family in it. I actually think the most interesting relationship that he did have with his friends was with Abby, who's kind of the newer friend of the friend group. He has two friends, Leah and Nick, who have kind of been a part of his life ever since he was a kid, and then Abby's kind of the newer member to the group. And I think that his interactions with her are kind of the most compelling, but that being said, I thought that all of the interactions were really interesting overall and that the characters were fairly well developed and it was really kind of neat to see the interactions between them. Again, it felt fairly realistic, but this is a little bit more commercial of a movie. It's not like Call Me By Your Name or Lady Bird where you really feel like it's a, a genuine like real life experience like it it's a lot less indie it's more commercial so because of that there is like a certain like paintbrush of falsity it, that kind of goes over the whole thing where you're like yeah this is a little too shiny and polished to seem like real life um but that being said again i think that they did a really good job of while you know having that commercial look um, to it, I think that they did a great job of having a certain level of authenticity and a really genuine um, sense of emotion throughout the entire thing, so there's that. And then on top of that, I also really wanted to talk about the performances because I think that the performances in this were really stand out. I have seen Nick Robinson, who plays Simon, in other things and I've never really been wowed by him, but I thought his portrayal of Simon was really stellar. I thought that there was some genuine emotion that I could really see in him and I don't know. I, I loved his performance as Simon. On top of that, I really liked the performances of Jennifer Garner, who, I mean, I just have such a lady crush on her. Like, I love her ever since Alias. Um, so I thought she did great. But also Josh Duhamel, who, you know, can be 50-50. Like, sometimes he has decent performances, and I think that they've gotten a lot better. But most of the time, he's just kind of like a hot dude bro. Anyway, I thought he was great in this too, and I thought that um, the scenes with him especially were very emotional. Like, I thought he did a really great job and got almost grounded the film, like him and Simon, because, yeah, I don't know, there's something that felt so real in his performance. I also really loved the whole dynamic between Simon and Blue, because they're living these very similar lives through this correspondence, like they're both closeted gay kids at this one high school, and they're both like, closeted from their families and slowly kind of coming out to the people that they care about and it's anyway it's it's like this interesting kind of thing where they make each other stronger which is really nice but because we don't know who Blue is we like Simon are constantly trying to figure out who he is and so there's this level of mystery that really drives the story I think really well so I think that that is also a really great element to it and really keeps the plot kind of going because as I mentioned it's very character driven and I think that most of it is just people sitting and talking, which I personally love and think is great. But um, but yeah, so that really keeps the momentum of the story going. Okay, so that is it for the non-spoiler section. If you haven't seen this movie, I highly recommend it. So do not watch the spoilers if they bug you. If you have seen the movie, uh, then I am going to get into my negative now. And there's actually only one. Now, I'm going to be completely transparent with you. I honestly, when I was watching the movie, I was like, I think this might be perfect. Like, I don't think that I can think of anything that's bugging me. So after I watched the movie, I did watch some reviews on the movie, 
and most of them were just 100% positive and that's kind of how I was feeling but then Chris Stuckman who is a reviewer that I really like I watched his video on Love, Simon, and he pointed out something that I realized kind of in retrospect it did bug me, um, but I just ha kind of hadn't really thought of it. But basically Martin, who is enamored with Abby, one of Simon's friends, blackmails Simon into basically trying to set them up. But Simon's other friend, Nick, is really into Abby and she seems to be into him too. So he has to start meddling in his friends' lives, people that he really cares about, in order to not be outed by this other guy. Now, I thought that some aspects of this were okay, but I will say I did think the Martin storyline was the weakest. I will say I agree with Chris Stuckman in that at the end, when Martin forcibly outs Simon, Simon's little snap back, his little angry words in the parking lot, I don't think that really captured enough of the hurt um, that Simon was feeling and I don't think that that would have been the end of it. I feel like, you know, Simon probably wouldn't have just left it at that. Like, that just didn't feel like there was enough there. I just don't feel like Martin had the repercussions that he deserved. So again, this was not my observation, it's just something that I agree with. I will leave Chris Stuckman's review of Love, Simon in the description box if you want to check that out. I also really like who Blue was, because basically there's three options. At first, Simon basically thinks that it's this kind of sportsy guy who's on the, you know, athletic team and he's kind of convinced that it's him, but then he catches him making out with a girl at a party and then next he thinks that it's this cute guy who's working at a restaurant and they had classes together like the previous year but then he sees him at a football game and the guy asks about Abby which I will say is honestly that scene gutted me because you were so with Simon you're like oh my god like is Simon gonna finally have his moment and it's you can see the hope in his eyes and then he asks about Abby and you can just see how gutted Simon is so I thought that that was such a brilliant moment um, and then the third option is this guy who's in the musical at school with him and he's like the pianist honestly at first I was kind of rooting for this guy because I thought they had some really cute chemistry but I'm actually really glad that it ended up being the sports guy because you again don't really see that much in this kind of story. In gay stories you never really see the the sports guy being the love interest. And if you do, it's oftentimes this kind of negative toxic thing like in Glee um, or where they have this toxic dad who you know is a sports guy. I don't know. I feel like it's kind of like a trope if it is done. And this was just really cute and positive and lovely. And that's kind of how I want to end this, is just by talking about how positive this movie is, I think, for gay people. And it's something that I love to see more of, because most of the time, even in Call Me By Your Name, like, gay people don't really get a happy ending, ever. Like, if they do, you know, there's always something, like, really negative, like, a negative undertone, whether it be at school, in the family, whatever. It's never, like, an actual happy ending. And, I mean, I feel like with Simon, you know, he struggled and there were obstacles and maybe some of the things didn't happen the way he wanted them to. But in the end, he does have a happy ending and he is able to redeem himself. And even if it isn't the way that he expected it to be, it's still beautiful and magical and he gets the love story that he deserves and I just think that is a beautiful message and something really positive for the LGBT community to see and to have and all of that. Also I just wanted to throw this in but um I don't really cry in movies and I got hella emotional at the scene between Simon and his father when his father is kind of coming to terms with Simon being gay and really when they have that moment of acceptance where he's like I love you like anyway I thought that performance was so nuanced that was what I was talking about with the Josh Duhamel performance like that that got the tears the tears of flowing so props for that as well so that is all I have for you today I hope you enjoyed this review I know that 
it's not as critical as you've kind of come to expect from me, but honestly I don't really have much negative to say. I love this movie. I love the humor, I love the characters, I love the performances, I love the direction. So I'm sorry, but I just, I loved it, so. There is going to be one more video in the Flash Flood, which is coming out tomorrow, and it is going to be one of the books that you voted for on Twitter, so stay tuned for that. I, uh, yeah, I'm excited for it. I think it's going to be a good video. I'm hyped. Thank you for tuning in again. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I think that's it, so I will see you next time. Bye!